So first, before we start uh, going through these hard questions and, and going through everybody's calendar, I want to turn the mic over to Jonathan. Some of you guys have been coaching with Jonathan for a little while here. He's been in my coaching calls for a couple months. And uh, Jonathan went and took the PMP exam. What was it, Friday? Thursday. Last, Last Friday, 8.15 in the morning from home. So I want you to walk me through first the actual test, and then we'll kind of rewind and we'll go back through what led up to it. But how did the test go? Well, it went well in that I passed. And so uh, I have been proud to add the PMP initials uh, at the end of my LinkedIn. And uh, the exam went really well. Uh, oh. I felt uh, ready, well prepared that morning. I did not encounter any uh, technology issues for which I was exceedingly grateful, but I had prepared my space, um, kind of arranged all the logistics in the household, and it went really uh, smoothly and nicely. That's awesome. Um, obviously, crushed it, right? So you got your results back and tell everybody how you did. So uh, they give you two sets of results. One is in the uh, three domains, how you did. And I uh, was very honored to get above target in all three. And then in the exam content outline, they go through, there are, if I remember correctly, 34, something like that, different um, um, tasks or, or areas of content that they encourage you to know about. And I got high in 25 of the 34, medium in nine, and I got no lows. So I was um, quite um, grateful to have such a good outcome. Yeah, you can't really ask for any better of a result than that. Um, we had a call the day or two before you actually went into the actual test. And I, I know I, I hyped you up and I said, I know you're ready to take this test. Yeah. Um, how did you feel mentally focused going in? Were you nervous? Were you excited? I think I was more kind of excited, maybe a little bit of that jittery excitement to be ready to go, ready to take it. I had earned my CAPM, my Certified Associate in Project Management, a few years back. So I knew I was comfortable with the idea of taking the extended uh, exam and the time that it would need. But I think I felt pretty well prepared. I had a good game plan. I'm a short guy. I'm five foot four. So I rewatched some of those mindfulness videos. And uh, the woman that talks to Scott talks about being short and getting a stool. So I got a little stool for my feet and just made sure the room was kind of comfortable, easy to be able to work in. And I planned out my breaks so that every time I took a break, I stopped, I left the room. I used the restroom, I got something to eat, I brushed my teeth because I didn't want to risk having something stuck between my teeth that was just <laughs> going to drive me nuts and distract me. I kind of had this rhythm, even though there's only two breaks there, that pattern, at least for me, helped me kind of refocus and be able to really um, stay engaged throughout the exam. Nice. Uh, so let's, let's take it back now, let's rewind. Uh, how long were you studying PMP things? How long were you in our course? So I took the exam on my 40th day from when I signed up for the course. I okay. had been doing a little bit of more independent study um, prior to joining the program, had actually started listening to Scott's uh, podcast. In total, I ended up listening to all 95 uh, episodes up to the point uh, uh -huh. that it was exam week. And that actually was one of my big helps because you get so many like different yeah. little pieces there that really helped. And um, then kind of those 40 days of, of going through the program, participating in the calls, being here and engaging with all of you, with Rob, it, uh, just was really great to pull it all together. That's awesome, man. I've been, I've been telling everybody lately to go check out the podcast and the YouTube videos. I think there's a ton of good yes. content there. Um, especially yeah. once you're done with the accelerator and you need a, a different avenue to watch something else. Yeah. Uh, so from a studying perspective, like I know, I know the content that you were watching. Did you mm -hmm. have a data dump going? Were you doing flashcards? Were you highlighting? Like, what was your strategy? So I, uh, was populating the evaporating data dump as Scott recommends. But what I did, and I'm glad that I did it this way, is I didn't go back 
to start evaporating the data dump until I was done with the videos. And I found that incredibly helpful because by the time I was done and came back, I actually had things that were already off of the evaporating data dump. I just looked at it and I was like, I figured that out since then. And so uh, I did not do any flashcards. What I basically had done is I took some very light notes, but then after I had finished the videos, I split my time between rewatching key videos, evaporating my evaporating data dump, and some practice exams. And I think between taking time and on different evenings, switching between those really helped me to be able to be prepared because I wasn't just sitting and re-watching video after video after video. I would spend time focusing in each of those different areas. Nice. Um, I always tell everybody on this call, you got to find the method of studying that works for you. Uh, if you guys mm -hmm. have heard multiple other students come back and talk about their strategy, it's, a, you know, everybody's got a different path. I had the last student who was on is, is very much a flashcard gentleman and that worked for him. So, um, cool. Let's open it up. And why don't you guys ask Jonathan any questions you might have uh, about what was actually on the test or the simulator or how he prepared and we'll take it from there. Hey, Jonathan, this is Patty. Um, yeah. when I take, when I take the uh, quizzes on agile, it seems like there's a lot of material in there that we haven't covered. And so I'm like not doing well in the agile. Did you do something different for agile? So what I did, I did not do something especially different for agile. Uh, my background is more on the waterfall side. So that was an area I was especially concerned about. So what I made a point of doing is if I emphasized one area of video watching more than others, it was agile. And I also made sure that I took an extra agile specific uh, simulator. It was only 20 questions, not 60, but that actually made me feel much better because I had first gone back and looked at my it would have been five simulators mapped out where I was across the different categories. Agile by far was my lowest. It was in the 50% of how well I was doing across all of my agile questions. So I knew that ended up then being my area to home in on. So thank you. So that's exactly where I am. I did the, the those quizzes on agile and that's where I am like 50, 60% over and over again. And there's like terminology that I don't feel like I've seen before. And I just didn't know if you, like I bought the agile, was that the practice, whatever the practice that guide. Um, yes. I've gone through that and there's, there's some additional help, but I was just curious if there was anything else that helped you get through agile. Also, was there a lot of agile on the exam or like, how did you feel about that? I would say that there was a lot of agile on the exam, but not in the way I was fearing. So the agile being on the exam really was situational questions. How would I respond in a given situation? And so when you understand some of the core tenets around what's the responsibility of the product owner versus the scrum master versus the team, or what the core concepts of uh, servant leadership, it's then applying that rather than specifically knowing what's the typical duration of a sprint review meeting and what sequence does that fall within? I found most of my questions tended to fall more in that area. And so I felt far more confident being able to answer questions of that nature with it being more situational. That's super helpful. Thank you. Sure, so great I know questions. You, you, did, you did mention that it felt like there was a lot of agile in concept, the questions felt agile in the questions that we go over, the hard questions. The first question I ask everybody on the call is like, does this feel like a waterfall situation or an agile situation? Would you say that on the actual test, you could have put them into one category or another, or was it all just sort of a blend of hybrid questions? <laughs> I would say, and I appreciate that question, Rob, because it's causing me to reflect a bit more. I actually would say it's probably more hybrid. The reason I probably leaned more towards Agile in general is just because so many of them are situational, they could apply to most situations of doing project management as opposed to which process precedes this one and what's the input tool and technique and output that comes from this process. All of that being very 
tactical waterfall, which for me, I did not encounter a lot of. All right, what other questions do you guys have for Jonathan? Hey, Jonathan, congrats. Um, I had no Thanks, doubt Amanda. that you're gonna pass that. Uh, Appreciate it. EVM, so mm -hmm. this is still a huge pain point for me. Um, what like what were the how are the questions really worded when it came to like EVM on the exam? So for me, I did not end up with any EVM that required me to um, do any calculating. So there's a calculator built into the system. I never touched it. I didn't use the whiteboard or the highlighter. I did use the strike through. I found that beneficial. Uh, for EVM, it would occasionally give me dollar amounts and I needed to recognize uh, what the situation might be, but that was the extent of it. I was not, you know, working to try and do complex uh, calculations with it. It was kind of understanding, did you know the concepts of how actual cost earned value uh, intersected with one another and what that then told you about the project? Okay, thank you, that's super helpful. Sure. And uh, Mano, we can spend a little bit of time talking about the, the basic EVM concepts too, if you want. Um, yeah. Over that that Yes, yeah. that would be great. I just keep running into like all, like multiple choice. We'll say like EAC or ETC, and like I have to go back and remember what those even mean, and then and then it makes me triple guess myself, and so let's, I'm just uh, trying to yeah. dumb this. Down. Yeah, let's let's spend a little time talking them through so that you understand them for future life. But I don't think that it's going to make or break the test by any means. No, okay. and the amount of EVM in terms of sheer number of questions was not significant at all. Um, I do have a question because I'm thinking about it. Uh, when it comes to the simulator, I always ask all my students, the scores that you were accumulating in the simulator, hopefully improving as you took more and more, yep. do you feel like they were indicative of how well you were going to do on the real exam? Was the simulator harder, easier? Um, I would say that the simulator was more challenging because I think the simulator um, includes situational questions, but includes a lot more non-situational questions of flows and processes and details like EVM calculations, things that at least on my exam, and I'm only speaking for myself, but I did not encounter quite uh, to the same level. So I felt very well prepared off of things uh, from the simulator with the hope that it was over preparing me for things. Cool, I think that's, yeah, that's the purpose of it. Can I ask um, one more. Can I ask one more thing? Of course. Yeah. Um, so when you're going through the questions, mm -hmm. did it kind of what we kind of do with Scott's questions, where we narrow it down almost to two? Did you feel yeah. like you were really, really between two answers, or a lot of times did you where you're like, this is the only answer it could be? Yeah. So uh, the um, you ab for me, I absolutely got to uh, two that I could cross out a lot of times. There were probably a f certainly a few times where I had three and rarely four good answers to have to kind of really think through. And that was where I would flag and come back, to, you know, put an answer so there's at least something, flag it and come back at the end of the 60 questions to be able to think it through. But monitor your question. Absolutely. There were times where I was kind of going and striking out and I was like, I can basically just strike out B, C and D all in one click and drag because A, I'm feeling good about, I start to strike out B, then look at C and think, oh no, and D, oh no, I'm not doing any of those. And it was very, at least for me, clear what it was. So I think you'll see more variety than we see in some of the hard questions. I feel like most of the hard questions are more commonly get it down a two and you could flip a coin uh, if you needed to. Here I saw more variability, but you're still getting it down to two a uh, significant amount of the time. Okay, awesome, thank you. Sure. Good question, good question. Um, hey, Jonathan, else? one more yes. question. How did you do on time? So I feel that I did very well on time. I 
my pacing in the actual exam was very consistent with my pacing when I was practicing, which is about an, a minute uh, a question. So uh, the technique I mentioned just before, if I got something that was especially challenging, I might want to revisit once I've seen other questions in that bundle of 60, I flagged it and kept going rather than agonizing and pouring five minutes into it. Because you're seeing a countdown timer on the right side, I could generally kind of see how I was doing with the pacing. Because you have some of those questions where you're like, oh, that answer is clearly it right off the bat. That occasionally made me up a little bit of time. So I ended the exam with a significant buffer, uh, especially by the time I was into the third uh, section, the last set of 60 questions, I wasn't concerned about running out of time. I didn't wanna be um, wasteful with it, um, but I, I became more and more confident that I didn't have to um, go at any uncomfortable speed. So. Guys, that brings up a, an actually a really good point uh, that I, I always forget to mention in this class is when you are in the test, the timer is counting down. Mm -hmm. So when I, I tell students to take practice exams, I'm always like, you know, turn on your phone, start a timer and watch your time, presumably clicking up. It would probably be ben beneficial to start the timer at the max and let it count down and then watch because you, you got to do a little bit of math on the fly, right? You got to see how much time do I have left versus how many questions are left. Uh, it's backwards. So practice that so that you're not surprised uh, or confused when you're, you know, in the heat of the test. Yes. Um, what else you guys got? Um, I think one thing I'd want to say, Rob, is um, I think this program uh, made me better able to manage projects. I just happened to get a PMP along the way. So I'm really grateful for so many of you being an encouragement to me uh, as I went through the process. It was uh, great to be able to learn alongside all of you. And I'm excited to hear how you all do. I'll put my LinkedIn uh, profile link in the chat and would be happy to connect with any of you from there if any questions come up after tonight. That's awesome, man. I, I totally appreciate it. And you know, if you need anything, you know how to get a hold of me. We're here for you. So we're going to uh, let Jonathan jump off in a second here and go celebrate. And uh, congratulations, good. man. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. Congrats. And thank you all. Congratulations. Have a great night.